Hey guys, we have a Cura settings tutorial for using Cura to enable fresh printing on either your printer bot or any other similar printer that has an, a syringe extruder mounted onto it. So we're going to go over the settings that you need to make sure that everything is going to be good for your first print so everything goes smoothly. So we're going to start out with everything like quality and layer height and we're going to go through each one of these individually to make sure that you have everything set properly. So starting out with layer height, you'll notice that we have 0 0.06 or 60 micron layer height, which you think is actually very, very small compared to standard plastic prints, which normally have an average resolution of 200 microns per, per layer. Uh, the reason for this is that we follow the formula that your layer height should be 40% of your nozzle diameter. In this case, we are using a 150 micron needle, and all of our print settings are going to reflect that. So for a 150 micron needle, 40% of that is going to be 60 microns. Obviously, if you step that up to a 250 micron needle, you will have a 100 micron layer height and so on. So keep that in mind throughout the rest of this video is that we're going to be using a 150 micron needle on our printer. So your shell thickness is 0.15 millimeters because that reflects the 150 micron uh, needle diameter. And that should always be the case is that your shell thickness is always going to be the needle diameter. For retraction, is actually a very advanced setting, and I recommend that you don't have it turned on if you're doing your first prints such as cubes or hollow cylinders. But if you've mastered cubes and hollow cylinders and you're trying to go on to something more advanced, in this case, we have a vertically raised hand, which is a very advanced print to show you some of the uh, settings that address certain difficulties. So for retraction, if you are confident using it, uh, we have the minimum travel speed here being two millimeters uh, and we're gonna turn off combing. We have our minimal extrusion before retracting 0 0.02 millimeters and the Z-hop being 0 0.2 millimeters. Essentially, retraction is the exact same with fresh printing as it is with plastic. What it says is, is that, say, you're traveling a good amount of distance before you are going to be extruding again. So this is a perfect example right here where we're going from the right side of the print printing the thumb all the way over to the left-hand side of the print printing the pinky. During this travel distance, there's a good chance that a little bit of fluid or plastic when you're printing plastic could leak out of the nozzle and cause a little bit of stringing and ruin the aesthetics of your print and potentially cause some other problems down the line as well. What you're saying with retraction is that you want to uh, bring a little bit of that fluid or that material back into your nozzle and almost pull it back up into the syringe to avoid it from coming out, and then you're going to redeposit it back over here. So it's the exact same concept as plastic printing, but you're just going to use slightly different settings for something like a fluid. Go going over to fill and fill density, you're going to have your fill density try and stick between 20 to 50 percent, uh, traditionally sticking at most with the Goldilocks being 30 to 35 percent. You really don't want to bother trying to go outside of these ranges until you've really gotten down uh, something like simple cubes. So uh, all the infill uh, expert settings, leave all those unchecked and have your infill overlap be around 15%. Infill overlap is a, is a setting that you'll check uh, much, much later in the future. Uh, for printing speed and temperature, remember that you're no longer printing plastic, but the printer doesn't know that. So printing temperature should be set to zero and you need to make sure that you're never heating anything like your bed uh, past room temperature. Because if you're using something like a gelatin support, you can easily liquefy your support material that you're printing if your bed actually starts to heat up. So you want to have everything in place to avoid any extruder heating and bed heating as well. So in this case, we're setting our printing temperature to zero. And print speed, you'll see that we have 20 millimeters uh, per second selected. And this is pretty average. I'd recommend the absolute most that you want to go up to is 40 millimeters per second and down to a minimum of, minimum of five, but really just sticking to 20 and not really deviating from that. There's really uh, not much change here. For support type, remember that the overall concept of Fresh is that you are embedding a gelling fluid into a ubiquitous support material. The printer doesn't know that, and the printer, if it was trying to print plastic, would just lay down some uh, scaffolding grid, which wastes time and material. But since you're printing into a support material, you don't need to actually turn anything on here, so just leave this unchecked, turn it off. For platform adhesion type, remember, you're printing a gelling fluid. You are no longer printing a plastic that you have to worry about adhering to your bed, so you can leave that checked off as well, uh, unchecked as well. Filament diameter is 7.285 millimeters. And you may think that this is really, really wide for a plastic print. You'd be right in thinking that because most plastic prints are way thinner. But the reason that our diameter for our filament is so much wider is because your filament diameter is reflective of the internal diameter of your syringe. In this case, we use a 2.5 milliliter Hamilton gas tight glass syringe and the internal diameter of that is 7.25 millimeters. An easy way to check that is to either check the online specifications from your manufacturer, or if you can't find them, you take out some calipers and you measure the plunger diameter 
uh, in your syringe. Those are the two best ways to do that. And if you increase the your syringe volume up to say five milliliters, you're also going to have to increase the filament diameter to reflect that. It's pretty simple. For flow percentage, uh, it's also known as things like flow tweak and, and other slicer settings or other slicing packages. Uh, basically, flow percentage is an overall multiplication to the calculation that the slicer has done for its, its extrusion path. So say if you're printing the edge of a cube that is one centimeter cubed, and it's printing one edge that is one centimeter, and for whatever reasons, the, everything's been calculated and the machine thinks it needs to extrude one milliliter of fluid to do this one centimeter edge, all that flow tweak and flow percentage says is multiply that by this percentage. So instead of extruding one milliliter, we will extrude 600 microliter. And keep in mind that flow percentage is an overall adjustment to your print. So if your print in general looks fuzzy, that normally means that you're over extruding. So use flow tweak to adjust that. If, however, you have fuzziness in between the digits of your hand here, that normally means that something like your retraction is off, especially if the rest of your uh, the body of your hand looks good. So don't be using flow tweak to adjust the finer parts of your print. Use it to adjust uh, and bring in the settings into an overall uh, good form before looking at anything finer. So traditionally for flow tweak, 60% is what we use for alginate and something like fibrin, and then we go up to around 100% or 1.0 flow tweak for something like collagen. Over in advanced settings, you'll see again that our nozzle size is 0.15 millimeter, and this is just because we're using that 150 micron needle. So just have this be reflective of whatever needle size you're using. Retraction, like I said, is an advanced setting. So in this case, we're using 0.8 millimeters per second, and I really wouldn't recommend going above one millimeter per second and adjusting it to maybe 0.5 millimeters per second. The distance can be anywhere from 0.075 to 0.05. Again, these are rather advanced settings, and we don't recommend that you waste a lot of time trying to experiment with them. Uh, for quality, a lot of this just stays the same. Uh, there's really next to nothing here that you need to be worrying about. For speed, you'll notice that our travel speed is 100 millimeters per second. This is pretty normal. I'd say for a MakerBot, you use around 180 millimeters per second, and for something like a PrinterBot, which you're hopefully using, we'll go down to maybe, I'd recommend 130 millimeters per second. But 100 is just fine. For all the other parts, for when you're actually printing, like your bottom layer and your infill, just keep everything around 20 millimeters per second, uh, maybe decrease to around 15, with your lower and higher ends being 15 and 40 millimeters per second, respectively. For cooling, you don't need to worry about the cooling fan, because don't forget that we're no longer worried about cooling filament or ABS that is coming out of our extruder. The only thing that you really might care about is this minimal layer time. Now, the only time that this comes uh, into being important is that if you look at something like the digits of the, uh, the finger, Right when we're finishing this print, the three circular cross sections of just doing the, uh, the middle three fingers of the hand, these don't take much time. They may take around five to seven seconds. So when you're moving the needle around very rapidly, going from one digit to the next and then immediately coming back to it, you need to have a little bit of extra time uh, to give the support material a little bit of time to thixotropically reset. So you can change your minimal layer time to saying, I don't want any layer to complete faster than, in this case, 10 seconds. And so 10 seconds is a pretty good uh, value to have. So this isn't going to be a setting that you're going to need to be worrying about when you have like a cube or a cylinder where all of your cross sections are identical. But if you have something with uh, much finer details near the top or like a spire, then you may want to look into using this setting. For your plugins, you shouldn't really need anything here. Uh, nothing here is actually very critical. Uh, it's okay if it's blank. Now your start and ng code, this is pretty important. Uh, probably the most important thing here is this M302 command. M302 is an override cold extrusions command. And this goes back to us saying that we have our printer temperature being at zero degrees C, and basically just telling the machine to not bother heating itself up at all. That basically is a safety feature within the printer that it is meant to not turn the extruder if it believes it has the potential to push cold filament through the extruder, which could damage it. So you basically are just overriding the safety feature in the printer to say it's okay to turn the extruder nozzle or the extruder stepper motor when you have not heated up to anything. If you do not have this turned on, then you could have all of your settings be perfect and everything be okay, but your extruder for some reason won't be turning. And if it's not turning, I definitely recommend that uh, this might be your culprit. So aside from that, G92, you're just setting your current position to being the home in the center of your bed. Because don't forget, when you are uh, putting your needle into your support material, you are the one that is physically adjusting it to being in the dead center of your support bath. Uh, you need to have that set up right before you print. 
So this just says that the printer does not need to home anywhere or move at all. It can just start printing the second that you press print. You really need to have that happen because if the printer still tries to home to either corner of the build platform, you can drag and move the entire syringe out of your container and potentially spill your container support material uh, and ruin your print from the very beginning. So you need to make sure that you, all of your G-code is reflective of not having to have the printer move at all when you press play. Go over to the MG code. M84 is just the uh, turn off stepper motors, which allows you to move the stepper motors freely with your hand after the print is done. And these two commands just tell the printer to raise the uh, nozzle or lower the build platform by one centimeter. And that's just to allow you to remove the print easily from underneath the, uh, the carriage. Other than that, that's pretty much everything. And you should be able to just plug this right into something like a PrinterBot Simple Metal or PrinterBot Play, and then just click print with the USB connected. Other than that, I hope you guys found this video enjoyable. If you have any comments, leave them in the sections below. Thanks.